All right, let's review summation notation and some summation formulas. So hopefully this is something you've already seen, but if you wanted to write uh, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, well, that, that kind of takes up a lot of space, and it would be easier if we just had a notation to do this for us. So the notation we use is, uh, this, is this, this is the Greek letter sigma, and we say sigma, or is, what it stands for is the sum, as i goes from 1 to 5 of i. So what does that mean? Well, it just means that you plug in 1 for i, and you, then you add that to when i is 2, when i is 3, when i is 4, and when i is 5. So you just get 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. You could read this as the, the, the left side is exactly equal to the right side. And if we wanted to, we could add this up by hand. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10, plus 5 is 15. So this whole thing is equal to 15. Well, what, what is, this is really useful for, this, this sigma notation, is if you want to add up more than five numbers, you know, if you want to add up something like 100 numbers. So the sum as I goes from 1 to 100. Well, now this is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot, 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 all the way till we get to 99 plus 100. So this is just an easier way to write it, and it turns out there's a really nice, neat formula for what this is. And so let me let me show you that. Let me actually derive it for you <clears throat> and then and then we'll we'll look at it. So if you want to add up 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 plus 98 plus 99 plus 100 well, this is going to equal some number, right? When you add actually add these all up, it's going to equal some number. So let's just put an s that uh to stand for the sum. You know, the number that this equals is the sum of all these numbers, so we're just calling it s. And now I'm going to do a little trick and just add them up in reverse. So we have 100 plus 99 plus 98 plus dot 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 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. So it's the exact same sum, we just added it in reverse, but we know it doesn't matter what order we added it. So what we're doing is we're really adding the sum to itself. And now what we get is the, is the interesting part. This becomes 101. Plus 2 plus 99, well, that's 101. 3 plus 98, that's 101. 4 plus 97, that's 101. And you can probably imagine all of these are going to be 101. 98 plus 3, that's 101. We're just going down the line here. So plus 101. And this is equal to, well, it's equal to twice the sum, right? We have two sums. We took one sum and we added it to itself. So we have two sums. And now what we have is we have 100 terms. They're all 101, so that's multiplication. We have 100 terms. The, the number that they are is 101. We have 100 terms of 101. And this is equal to 2 times the sum. But what we're trying to find is just 1, the, 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 the sum itself. So we just divide both sides by 2. And we get, our, uh, we get the sum is equal to 100 times 101 divided by 2, which is equal to the sum, which in this case, for 100, this happens to be, uh, if you want to add up 1 through 100, this is 5,050. 5,050. Okay, so this seems like a nifty little trick, and in fact, it works for any number. So what, what, was, what could our formula be? Well, the number we had was 100, so let's call that, instead of 100, let's call it n. And then we multiplied by 100 plus 1, so let's say n plus 1. And then we divided by 2. And this is the sum of, uh, this is the formula for finding the sum of, of, of any number. So let's look at that. Let me, let me actually erase the derivation here. So I, I hope that you've actually seen that before because uh, I know that that they teach it in even algebra classes. But anyways, so the sum from uh, as i goes from one to a hundred. Oh, sorry, one. That we'll do, we're doing the general version. One to n. N is just any integer of i. Well, this is equal to n times n plus one over two. Let's test it out for five. What's five? 
So, so for five, this would be the sum. Oh, not, I shouldn't write equals. I should just write something like, for example, what's going on here? There we go. Sorry about that. For example, let's try i goes from one to five. We already added it up. It was 15. So this should be, according to our formula, five times five plus one, which is six, divided by two. Well, this is five times six is 30 divided by two. That's 15. So we know that it works for 5, and in fact it works for any number, it works for any number n. So this is a formula that we're going to use in the future, it's a summation formula. Let me give you another summation formula. This one I will not derive, maybe in some other video, of i squared, if you take the, the sum of i squared of any number, well now you just, it's just that number, times n plus 1, the number plus 1, times twice the number plus 1, divided by 6. And I rarely tell you to memorize things, but this is one that you probably just want to know by memory. And in fact, you could, you could go online and look up summation formulas and find out where this comes from. And like I said, maybe in some future video, I will, I'll show you where that comes from. Okay. So these are two summation formulas. And then the last one I want to show you is just the summation of a constant. So if you want to take the sum as i goes from 1 to n of some number, let's just say instead of i, right, i we were adding up 1 plus 2 plus 3. Let's say we take the, num the sum of c, some constant. Well, then this just becomes c times n. And let me show you why. Let's take, let's use a real example. Let's say we take the sum as i goes from 1 to 10 of, of 2. Well, since, since there's no i in, in this expression, it's just a 2, then i doesn't change. So this just becomes 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. That happens 10 times. So you have 10 terms of 2. So that's just 10 times 2. So instead of writing it like this, we just write c times n. So 2 times 10, which is just 20. Okay, so these are three summation formulas that you're going to want to know. The sum of a constant, the sum of just i, and the sum of i squared. And then the other things that you're going to want to know about sums are some just some simple properties that are really similar to properties that we've already seen. But the sum as i goes from 1 to n of, of let's say, i plus Let's say i plus c, so you're taking the sum of both of these. Well, this is just the sum as i goes from 1 to n of i plus the sum as, as i goes from 1 to n of c. So this was very, very similar, or this is a very similar property we have when we were talking about limits. The limit of a sum was the sum of the limits. Here, the sum of a sum is the sum of the sums. I know that sounds ridiculous, but you, you, can, you understand this property. You can see what's going on. And then one last property uh, before we go. And I know this is a lot all at once, but just absorb what you can. Maybe rewatch the video. But one last property is just the sum, let's say, uh, of something times i. So let's say like 2 times i. Well, this is a similar property to we had before, again, where the 2 is a scalar multiple, so you can pull it out. So we talked about that for derivatives and for limits, and it just turns out this is 2 times this sum. And in fact, we know what this sum is. We have the formula for it, so this becomes 2 times n times n plus 1 over 2. Well, I don't want to confuse you with specific examples. Let's, let me... I've been using generalizations this whole time, so why, why stop now? Some constant multiple times i, so this becomes c, the constant multiple, times, times the sum. So we'll leave it at that. Okay, we'll, we'll put these pieces together using sums and, and finding area under a curve in the next few videos. See you then.